Alright, hello you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite Spam, and welcome back to Tower Defense, uh, a little project I'm working on in Game Maker Studio. So, in the last part of this, I picked this project up again for the first time in like seven or eight months, and did a lot of stuff with it, and by that I mean I fixed a lot of problems that I probably should not have ever become problems in the first place. Anyway, yeah, in this part I'm going to be actually adding stuff uh, to the game instead of just fixing up my, like, previous bad game design choices. Anyway... Uh, first, before I actually get to that, a small change I want to make is period, uh, for a small period of time at the beginning of the game, uh, before the enemies start coming in, uh, it does say at the top of the screen wave number zero, or wave number negative one rather, and that's not really what should be happening. That has to do with the way that I decided to generate the waves. To take care of that, if wave is less than zero, not less than or equal to, but just less than zero, uh, I'm going to draw a different string of text, and else, if the wave is greater than or equal to zero, I'm going to draw this, and the separate string of text is going to be just kind of like no value over there, so when I run the game, uh, it won't say wave number negative one, because that is really just kind of weird to think about, uh, so there, for a, couple, for a second or two, it was a wave dash instead of negative one. Anyway, I do want to be, I think I've been saying I would do this for a while now, uh, but I do want to go, that's the enemy, into the tower and be able to select them and show their stats on the side of the screen and stuff. So, I'm not sure how far I'll go with this exactly. In the tower's create event, this is going to be uh, getting another uh, true or false variable that is going to say selected, and it's going to start off as true. And only towers that are selected should be able to draw their range on the screen. And otherwise, they're just kind of distracting if you have 50 towers on the screen and 50 rings all over the place. Selected is, there's probably a way to consolidate all of these. But I do want to make this code clear to read rather than extremely efficient. Optimization is really a conversation for another day. But selected is, is going to be different from uh, Kent Fire and Activated. Um, additionally, let's see, a tower that is selected should be drawing a couple of variables on the screen. I could do this in the draw event, but I, like I said before, I do want to be using the draw GUI event for things that I should be using the draw GUI event for, such as uh, object stats and things like that. So, let's see, I have an idea, and I'm going to have to look at the way uh, the map is laid out for this, but like stats and stuff should go on this side of uh, the screen. There's no particular reason for that. Uh, this right part of the screen is just where it feels normal for me to have an overlay and stuff in tower defense games. Uh, I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm right-handed or something. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move over the path a little bit. So, tiles, look for sand, and I'm going to delete like two rows just so that there's a little bit of space, and uh, stick a couple more down there. Did I just place two of them by accident? Oh, well, never mind, How, uh, tiles are inexpensive to process, so I also need to go not have that maximized in the path resource. I'm also going to need to update the position of the path so uh, so that that's actually where the enemies move. I'm also going to move this down a little bit so the enemies can completely disappear off, uh, off the screen before they're removed and you lose health and stuff. Alright, why does this window keep minimizing? I feel like I shouldn't do that. Let's see, so the first thing, obviously, that you need to do, draw, set, well, you don't need to do it, but it's a good idea, uh, H align, FA left, just in case whatever got drawn before this, uh, this overlay is, like, centered or something like that, and draw, set, V line, uh, FA top. So this is going to be, a uh, the text is going to be, uh, originated at the top left corner for all draw text. Anyway, also, I don't think this is ever going to be a problem, but draw uh, set color uh, C black. I don't think anywhere else in this game I've set the draw color, but just in case there's no harm in resetting it to black anyway, or whatever other color you want to make your uh, the text on your overlay is blue or red or... it doesn't matter. Anyway, now to draw the actual text. Uh, how about 64... Uh, I do want to have a, uh, a decent idea of where this is going to be drawn. So 64, 
It's going to be up here, and 864 is the x coordinate. I don't want to draw it exactly at 864. When drawing things on the right side of the screen, especially in the bottom part, it's a good idea to not use the exact coordinates, but relative, like 128 pixels away from uh, the edge of the screen, the right edge of the screen. And to do that, you could say room width or uh, window get width or something like that. And this is actually something I should think about for now. All right, so to start with, I'm going to go into controller and create kind of a constant value. It's I'm not going to define it in the constants. I did not mean to do that. I'm not going to define it in the constants menu. What am I talking about? I, that's exactly what I should do. Um, in this constants menu, uh, width equals width and height in all capital letters are going to be constant variables uh, storing the value of when to get width and height. So it doesn't matter what I decide to make the uh, the size of the room or the size of the view or, or whatever. This is going to be drawn relative to the actual game window. And why did I make x64? x should be width minus, I think I said I tried 128, and y is going to be 64. Uh, and that obviously does not need any like prefix or anything because it's from the top of the screen, which is automatically zero. Make that smaller. Uh, to make... To stop beating around the bush, let's see what I want to draw. Attack, uh, range, and uh, fire rate. So I can say attack is string value of attack. Draw this. Did I really misspell the word with? I really misspelled the word with. Uh, range is going to be the string value of uh, the range variable and fire rate. is going to be the string value of rate. Let's see, these should not all be drawn at the same position because then they will all appear on top of each other and it would look very weird. 96 and what's uh, 128 is the next multiple of 32. That's probably kind of a lot of spacing, to be honest. Um, also, before I actually start, I was talking earlier about uh, only doing this if this is uh, if the tower is selected, and I should do that. Let's see if selected, draw all these values. Otherwise, don't do anything. And in here, okay, so I already did that. If selected is true, uh, draw the range on the screen. Otherwise, don't do anything. And when it comes to actually uh, clicking on and selecting the towers themselves, this is uh, where I had in mind to do it when you release the mouse button. So if activated equals false, do this. Otherwise, this doesn't need to be an else. Uh, with, first I'm going to deselect all the other towers, so uh, with the general tower object, this is going to make this code execute, execute for every object in the game. Select equals false, and then uh, once that has been cleared, the tower that's been clicked on is going to uh, be reselected. I guess to make that clearer, uh, prefix that with the self special object. All right, that should be what I have in mind, and if not, I must have screwed something up very badly. All right, so I click that, moving it around, you can see it's attack range and fire rate. Uh, once again, uh, the other one got deselected when I put this down, let's see. Okay, so that's going to cause the problem of uh, when you click on another tower, you'll not only uh, select it, but you'll also be creating another one, and that's not really a good idea. That should be relatively easy to take care of. Uh, so going back in the control object, going to be adding more to the global left pressed and saying if not place meeting uh, mouse x, mouse y, and a tower object, then that's when you can go and uh, set up a new one. Otherwise, if you are clicking on another tower object, it would be selected in let's see the tower's own click event. And had in mind to start them out selected so that you can like see their stats and uh, the attack radius and stuff. Debating with myself whether I should keep that or not, and I have to make a quick decision because I don't want to sit here forever. Uh, I'm going to do that. Except first with the other towers, uh, when a new one is created, regardless of whether you uh, place it down or end up deleting it with the backspace key, uh, we're going to be deselecting all the other towers another thing of code style that I should look out for when I'm uh, making these videos. Sometimes, like with an if statement or one of these with statements or something, uh, when there's only one statement following, you don't have to use the curly braces. And sometimes I do anyway, and sometimes I just don't use them at all. And I really 
need to get in the habit of choosing one uh, one way or another. I'll do that before uploading this project file later on at the end of this video. Anyway, uh, put you down there, put you down here. Uh, can't put you down over there or over there, but I can't put you down over there. Uh, and it's still letting me go in. All right, so that didn't solve the problem. Why did that not solve the problem? Does the place meeting function not do what I think it's doing? Let me go and uh, do my homework on this real quickly. All right, so for the place meeting function to work properly, uh, both instances, both instance that's calling it and the instance that's uh, that's being checked need to have a collision mask. So this would be good for like checking a tower against a tower, but not the controller against a tower because the controller does not have any sort of collision uh, information because that wouldn't make much sense. I didn't mean to get out of there. So if I change this to something like a collision point, which should just be, I think I said this earlier, but this should be more general check uh, to see if there is anything at a certain position. This should work. I actually did not know that about place muting before this. Might explain some of the annoying errors I've had with it in the past. Anyway, can't put that down there. All right, so I'm clicking between them and selecting them instead of uh, creating a new one. Great. Uh, how close can I get before it does that? Okay, so that's a decent amount. All right. What else did I want to do? Um, it's worth mentioning that all of these conditions can be combined into one if statement. But again, I think in this case, readability is more important than having, like, using fewest words as possible. Anyway, uh, get out of there. What else was there that I wanted to do? I was talking about, like, overlay stuff. Thinking I should probably put like the uh, this overlay in the same general area as uh, the one where the tower the the tower's information are is are whatever. So let me do this real quickly. Instead of these positions, I'm going to say I'm going to move it basically just over to the other side of the window, and the tower's information is going to have to be moved down to account for the space the, the space that this is going to take up. Uh, the lowest one over here is at 128, y equals 128, so when the tower draws its text, the first one should start at the next position would be 160, 192, and 224. Do not ask why I have multiples of 32 memorized, because I'm pretty sure that's not a thing most people do. Anyway, see this is on that side of the screen, and when I click over there, uh, the tower's information goes over there also. Can't really see it change because all the towers have identical stats, which is a problem I'll address in the future. And I do like the way this looks a lot better than uh, the way it looked when I started recording the last video after that seven months hiatus. Anyway, I guess as a little reminder to not put anything else uh, on that side of the screen, I'll say also in the draw GUI event, it's the first draw set. Uh, VLAN, because I said that was important earlier, and I appear to not have it done here. Uh, FA, top, really, and this is something that I kind of forget to do like half the time also, but regardless of whether or not you think you actually need to, uh, you should set the color horizontal alignment and vertical alignment, because it does happen on occasion that those things get messed up, depending on what's happening in other parts of the game. And instead of like trying to figure out the order of events that the game is going to carry out. It's best to just uh, plan ahead. So C, black is going to be the color. I'm going to put a white rectangle underneath this. It's kind of a, a background against whatever I decide to actually put in the background of the rest of the game. So draw a rectangle. And it's going to start at x equals... The text starts at width minus 128. So, to give it a little bit of space, uh, what's the next one? 160 with minus 160, that should be reasonable. Uh, y equals 0, and it's going to end that with height, and outline only is false. You want the whole thing to be filled in. All right, that should provide a background for like the, uh, the information to be appearing on. Eh, I might like reposition this a little bit on my own time later on, but that kind of nitpicking isn't really what I want to spend a video on, so I won't do that right now. Let's see. Is that even okay? So that this one barely uh, actually has its collision radius like on the path anywhere. 
Yeah, that looks decently decent. Um, the last thing, this isn't related to like information overlays or anything at all, but I do want to get it done, and I'm probably going to forget by the time I record the next video, at least until I've decided what I want to do in that video. You can't do collision checks directly with tiles, because that placed an object and I don't want it there. Please, go away. Uh, you can't do collision checks directly with tiles, because the idea of tiles to begin with is that they're, uh, they're basically just pictures and they don't like to react with anything. So, I'm going to be using an invisible wall strategy, and its sprite should be nothing because I don't want it to be visible. Uh, you can use a sprite and still have it not visible, but it's easiest to just use the collision mask. Uh, for the collision mask itself, I'm going to copy this to make sure... No, I'm not going to copy that because that's going to make another background. Going to uh, copy the actual picture, make a sprite out of it to make sure it's the right size, and let's see... Instead of uh, the sand picture, I'm just going to draw an X over it so that in the uh, the room editor you can see what's behind it, but you will know that it's a, uh, let's see, outline only, uh, you will know that it's supposed to represent an invisible wall, so something along the lines of that. Obviously, I am an amazing pixel artist. That gets the, uh, the concept across, right? All right, thicker lines, those will be a little bit easier to see from uh, the regular zoom. Well, let's see, that spread order needs to be centered because uh, the tiles... No. That spread order needs to be uh, zeroed because the tiles originate at zero uh, automatically. <clears throat> let's see, the name is going to be... Uh, okay. The object does not need any code, it just needs to exist. And let's see, where is it? It's in the towers uh, mouse event is where it gets placed down. So in addition to uh, if you're free of colliding with a tower, I'm going to say and writing out and. I try to remember to do that and when I'm recording videos and usually fail, but again, readable code. Uh, a collision with invisible wall uh, returns false. Both these conditions have to be met before uh, anything gets placed down. Uh, okay, out of that, I don't need that, and then I'm just going to go into the room editor and stick a bunch of these things down. Actually, no, these things should have a these things should have a sprite, so I can actually see where I'm putting them. Uh, just can I make them invisible and have them still respond to collision checks? I think so. Anyway, uh, Shift Control should let me add multiple. All right, there we go. Uh, the purpose of using invisible walls rather than just making the tiles themselves objects is so that any tile at all, like not just the sand or whatever, can be used to represent the path. And all I'd have to do is use the new tile and just stick the invisible wall over it. Also, I could go and stick some invisible walls over uh, where the overlay would be so that like you can't put a tower underneath one of those. Yeah. Why not? All right, so this this area is kind of off limits. This is a lot of objects checking for collisions, but all right, shouldn't look any different than it did before, except that you can't place any towers uh, over anywhere one of these X's are. Let's see. All right, so I can't put it down over here. I can put it down over there, but not actually over the path, and I can't put it down over here. Okay, that's reasonable. That's enough for now. To extend that a little, like I did with the uh, the towers having collision masks slightly larger than they are, so uh, you have a little bit of space between them, you could make the, uh, the invisible wall object slightly larger than the actual path tiles are, so that, you, so that you're forced to uh, have little space between where you put the tower down and the actual path. Yeah, why not? This video is kind of long, but I'm going to do that anyway, because I can foresee... Uh, the screen getting very crowded otherwise. Give me a minute. Alright, so the square is twice as big, but the origin is going to be uh, at 16 by 16, so on the map, it's actually a... Let me clear all these first and do that again. On the map, uh, they're centered over uh, the tiles. Also, this means that you don't have to place quite as many of them down, which is nice.
All right, there we go. Uh, there's a little bit of overlap in some places, but now, like with the towers, you not only can't build the towers on top of the uh, path, but you have to give them a little bit of distance, too. Uh, this also cuts down on the number of tiles needed, but that's like geometry and uh, not really relevant right now. It's just because they cover a larger surface area. Anyway, let's see. So I can stick that there, and if you look where the mouse cursor is, it's not on top of the path, but uh, I can't put it down anyway. I can't put it down there, so it's not right on top of the path. Also, let's see, I can't put it down here, but not like underneath this, which is uh, also part of the ideas. All right, one more thing comes to mind. Hmm. Game over. Oh, layering issues with depth. Actually, no, because I don't have to worry about that because uh, the Dragoo event is separate from depth. Like, the depth order still occurs in the Dragoo event, but you don't have to worry about, like, objects in the game interfering with objects in the HUD or anything like that, which is nice. Anyway, I have talked for way too long now. Um, as always, a download link to this project file will be in the description of this video in case you want to go and uh, take that and mess around with it or anything. I'll try to remember to put better slash more helpful comments in there and stuff like that, but... Uh, rate, comment, and subscribe, watch some of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.